everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be making some recipes that are perfect for the holidays coming up. I'm gonna make some mushroom gravy, and to go with my mushroom gravy, I'm gonna make some cauliflower mashed potatoes in my Instant Pot. Um, these are some of my favorite recipes that I've been making for like years to bring to holiday family gatherings. On my channel, I do mostly whole food, healthy, plant-based, lower sodium recipes. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And let's just jump into today's recipe. First, I'm gonna do my mashed potatoes so that these can be cooking while I'm working on my gravy. And my favorite way to do mashed potatoes is in the Instant Pot. I'm using this little steamer basket. Funny story, for the past like two weeks, we couldn't use our garbage disposal because it was making this like horrible noise. Um, and we were like reaching our hands in there and like we couldn't find anything. We were like, I think it's just broken. A couple days ago, I pulled out the missing spoke to the steamer basket. It was in the garbage disposal. But it's funny because I was looking for that. I was like, where's that one little piece? It was in the garbage disposal. <laughs> Anyways, I'm putting this in the Instant Pot and I'm gonna pour in one cup of water. Then on the bottom, I'm gonna do, I have three large potatoes. This is about like two and a half pounds. And I tried to chop them up pretty small, like in one inch cubes so that they'll steam faster because I'm also gonna steam it at the same time as I cook the cauliflower. So I want it to cook like faster, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna put these in the bottom. And then I picked up the biggest cauliflower I could find. This one is absolutely huge. It's massive. And just kind of break it up into big chunks because you want the cauliflower to like not cook super fast because the potatoes take longer to cook than the cauliflower. So you want to leave these kind of in like big chunks. Actually, I don't, this is so big that I don't know if it's all going to fit in here. I'm just going to really load it up here. Just stuff it all in there. Pop on the lid, press manual or pressure cook if you're using a different model. And I'm gonna set the timer to six minutes. Next up, I'm gonna start working on our mushroom gravy. So I have two containers of cremini mushrooms and I tried to pick ones that are like kind of small like this so that they wouldn't be like huge pieces of mushroom in the gravy. I'm just gonna slice this up. So last year, I don't think I made like any um, like holiday recipes on my channel because I was working full time on a TV show. But last year for Thanksgiving, this is kind of a funny story. We went to Yosemite for Thanksgiving and stayed in like a mini little cabin. And on the weekend before we left, I cooked an entire Thanksgiving feast. I should have filmed this because it, it was actually pretty impressive. I made green bean casserole, butternut squash, mashed potatoes, um, like a loaf, packed it all in a cooler and drove it to Yosemite with us so that we could have Thanksgiving dinner in Yosemite. I literally made an entire feast just for me and Colin. Okay, so I'm gonna set these all aside. This is so many mushrooms. And next, I'm gonna dice up one onion. Um, this is a small yellow onion. And I'm gonna dice it up really thin. So every single year for like four years in a row, I would make the same Thanksgiving recipes and bring them to my family Thanksgiving. Dr. Furman's Thanksgiving non-meatloaf. I've made that recipe for like years. And then the other favorite recipe that I would bring is kale casserole. And it sounds disgusting, but like everybody loves the kale casserole. I swear, like everybody like scoops it up. <laughs> and I posted a recipe video on it one time because it's like so good. Like my mom loves it, always asks me to bring my kale casserole. And it hardly got any views and people were like, that looks disgusting. So I deleted the video but it is honestly like one of my favorite holiday recipes to bring. So let me know if you want the recipe for that video. I posted it like years ago and then I deleted the video. 
the next thing I'm gonna chop up is this beautiful purple garlic. I just picked this up from the farmer's market. Look how purple it is. It's so pretty. I think I'm gonna do like four in my mushrooms. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer you guys over to my stove so we can start making my gravy. And I got something really special to show you. <laughs> Pot. So I'm just gonna let this heat up and then we'll start cooking our gravy. I'm gonna use just a little bit of oil. I don't use a lot of oil in my recipes, but um, in these two recipes I like to do just a little bit, like a tablespoon or so. First I'm adding in our onions. And you could totally just water saute this. And I'm just gonna let these cook down for a couple minutes. You splash in some water so your onions don't burn. And I'm just gonna give that a stir. So I'm gonna add in all of the mushrooms that we sliced up. Okay, so you want to stir your mushrooms so that they cook evenly. And to my mushrooms, I'm going to add about half a tablespoon of fresh rosemary that I just picked from my garden. And I chopped it up really small. About a teaspoon of thyme. A bunch of fresh cracked pepper. About three teaspoons of coconut aminos. I like to use coconut aminos because it's lower in sodium, but you can also use liquid aminos or low sodium soy sauce. Um, but yeah, feel free to adjust this recipe's like saltiness to your taste preferences. And this is optional, but I love to add this Trader Joe's umami mushroom seasoning to my gravy. I'm just gonna add a little sprinkle for some extra flavor, but you don't need this if you don't have like a Trader Joe's near you. After like five minutes, I like to cover it and let the mushrooms like just give off their own liquid. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. I'm gonna add in the rest of my ingredients. about two and a half cups of low sodium veggie broth. And you can taste it and adjust the seasonings. I like to add more of this mushroom powder. So good. And bring this back up to a simmer. Next, I'm gonna add in some raw almond butter to make it creamy. About two heaping tablespoons and mix it really good so that it all like gets dissolved. Lastly, as a thickener, I'm adding in two tablespoons of cornstarch mixed in three tablespoons of water and let it keep simmering for a couple more minutes until it thickens. And that is it for this recipe. It is seriously so yummy and flavorful. So I'm back making my mashed potatoes and my potatoes and cauliflower finished steaming. I did six minutes and a quick release and it was the perfect amount of time. I'm gonna make these like garlic and green onion mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna cook down some garlic in my instant pot, put it on the saute, and I just took out the cauliflower and mashed potatoes and then I drained out the extra water in the inner pot. I'm actually gonna puree my cauliflower in my Vitamix because if you just mash it with a regular potato masher, it kind of leaves like chunks. And I don't want there to be any cauliflower chunks. I want it to be like kind of smooth, but do not put potatoes in a 
Vitamix or food processor, they will turn like really gummy. Only do the cauliflower and I will be right back. My blender is actually on the floor. <laughs> And it is actually super easy to puree. It like turns to mush in a few seconds. Side note, cauliflower makes an amazing cream substitute to green bean casserole. You can use like cauliflower puree as base instead of like cream of mushroom soup. To my Instant Pot, I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil in this recipe again because I want my garlic to really bring out the most flavor, but feel free to water saute. I'm gonna add all this garlic and it's been heating up for a while, so it's kind of burning now. Ugh. Okay, I think that was like six cloves of garlic. And I'm gonna add in about a half a cup of green onions. Wow, it smells phenomenal in here. Okay, so those have been cooking for a few minutes. I'm gonna add in my potatoes and start mashing them up. And start mashing those up. They should be really soft. I wish you could smell the garlic in here. Okay, so for my mashed potatoes, I like to use either oat milk, soy milk, or plain unsweetened almond breeze but I have accidentally poisoned my cousin who's allergic to nuts before, so now I don't do any nuts at family events, like Thanksgiving or Christmas or like any other family gathering. I do oat milk, and oat milk is pretty creamy, so it works really well in um, mashed potatoes. Just make sure it is doesn't have any sugar added or vanilla or else your mashed potatoes will taste like really bad. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in the cauliflower puree. This comes out super creamy, this cauliflower cream. I'm gonna add in some black pepper and a little bit of salt. You can adjust the salt to however much you like. You can just do no salt added because I do a lot of no salt added recipes on this channel too. But I feel like mashed potatoes, like they need a little bit of salt or else it literally just tastes like nothing. And let's shut off the Instant Pot. Wow, so much garlic flavor. Mmm. The cauliflower makes it so creamy, it's so weird. Like you wouldn't think cauliflower has that like creamy texture, but once you puree it, crazy. And yeah, those are my finished recipes. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know if you try my recipes this holiday season and tag me in your pictures on Instagram. These will be linked on my blog so you have an easy version of them to access. Thank you so much for joining me today for this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye.